Hey, I'm Alec, and in this Matter Control tutorial, I'm going to be giving you an intermediate overview of some troubleshooting tips and specific guidelines within Matter Control slice settings. This tutorial will be very specific and detailed, so if you want to jump ahead to parts you know you want to see, go to the description down below or jump to these times. Hey there, I'm Alec from Matter Hackers, and in this tutorial I will be going over some of these slice settings you'll be changing most frequently. Not necessarily for troubleshooting, but because different settings also impact the strength and detail of your printed parts. On the right side here are all the slice settings and controls, but I'll click this pin so that we can see all these settings at once and they don't close away. Most of what you change will be within the slice settings tab on the right hand side. These impact everything from the speed your printer moves to the temperature that it's printing at. For general printing purposes, using the quality presets and the material presets that are made by the pros at MatterHackers should work pretty well. But for very specific scenarios where you need to prioritize strength or detail or speed, then that's where you may want to start tuning the settings. The general tab under slice settings is where you'll be spending most of your time. These settings directly correlate to part quality, that is strength, resolution, and speed. If at any time you feel like you can't find the slice settings I'm describing or the buttons that I'm talking about, that may be because we're on different versions. I'm recording this tutorial in Matter Control 2.0 for Windows version 2.19.2. In the following scenarios, I will be working based off of the Pulse C232 profile, which has a 0.4 millimeter nozzle and will affect some of these slice settings that you can actually achieve. Let's say you're trying to print a part that prioritizes strength over resolution and speed. Here's what you might want to do. Keep your layer height within a range that is achievable by your nozzle. The general rule to follow is max layer height is your nozzle diameter in millimeters times 0.75. So we have a 0.4 millimeter nozzle on this printer. You shouldn't go any higher than a 0.3 millimeter layer thickness. As long as you follow that rule, you shouldn't see any variance in strength between 0.1 millimeter or 0.3 millimeter layers. Those should be relatively the same strength. Perimeters are the outside shell of your parts, and this is where you derive most of the strength. For me, three perimeters is ideal for parts that will regularly face some form of stress, and any more than that doesn't tend to happen often for me. Some parts may benefit from more perimeters, but it generally doesn't improve too much. Top and bottom solid layers close off your 3D print on the top and bottom respectively. You need more layers on top than on bottom to bridge over infill, so I would suggest a minimum of 5 top and 3 bottom layers, or 1 millimeter of top thickness and 0.6 millimeters of bottom thickness, whichever gets me more top and bottom solid layers with my layer height. You also have the choice of your infill type. And some infill types hurt your strength, like concentric and lines, just with the way that they are created within your part. But it's really your choice whether you want to use hexagon, triangles, or grid. Their strength is comparable. Density plays a significant but less significant role than perimeters, so for your average part, 30% is a good ceiling for infill density. If you want a better resolution out of your part but don't care about time to print or don't necessarily care about its strength, here's what you might want to do. Change your layer height to 0.1 millimeters or below for high quality. Now I don't usually dip below 0.1 millimeters simply because it turns a 10 hour print into 20 and that point an SLA printer will probably be doing you better. You want a minimum of two perimeters to keep the outer surface looking clean. If you're not prioritizing strength then you don't really need to go with three. So I go with two. Top and bottom layers follow the same rule as before. Five on top and three on bottom or one millimeter and 0.6 millimeters whichever gives me more layers. So in this case it would be 10 and 6. For resolution, infill type and density doesn't really matter, so a 10% infill will provide structural support for your top layers, and triangle is a fairly quick infill. If you want a good all-around print, there's only a couple things you really need to change. A 0.2 millimeter layer height is pretty standard, and changing your infill to 15%, your in perimeters to 2, and leaving your top and bottom solid layers at 1 millimeter is just fine. Now those settings were all if you're looking for a specific result out of your printed part. If instead your results aren't up to the quality you're expecting them are and you need some sort of troubleshooting, let's dive into what those settings might be. If you notice that your prints have sections where there's weird over or under extrusion in your top solid layers, you may want to check out some of these settings. In layers and surfaces, there's one called merge overlapping lines, which can be turned on or off. Most models will benefit from having it turned on, but some still struggle with it. What it does is if two lines will overlap, then it will cause a little ridge in your print in that spot where the lines smeared each other. So turning it on will make it print only one line instead. Say for example, you're printing text that's sticking out of the top of your object. This can cause them to appear hollow in some cases, 
and turning off merge overlapping lines can help. On top of that, your printer's capabilities are limited to what your nozzle can do. If a feature of your 3D model is smaller than your nozzle, then it won't be printed. Matter Control can force that feature to be printed by turning on expand thin walls, which will just take that part and inflate it so that it's thick enough to be printed. Fill thin gaps detects gaps between perimeters that are too thin to fill with normal infill, which is that jagged, going back and forth really fast motion, and it will attempt to fill them in. So if the gap between your walls is just big enough to fit another perimeter but not two full perimeters, it'll do that instead of turning your printer into a jittery mess as it prints the infill. And 3D printers have a speed limit. While you can change the speed within matter control, you may notice that increasing the speed starts to introduce artifacts into your print, like ringing as the printer's motion resonates throughout the frame. Lowering your speed will generally increase print quality related to resonance, but it won't fix all your problems. If you notice features of your 3D prints echoing past where they should be, like a hole in the side of your print is seen further away from that actual hole, well this is called ghosting or ringing and is most easily fixed by dropping your print speed settings. If you're printing PLA, which in my opinion you should start with as a beginner, your layer cooling fan is hugely important for your print quality. Your fan settings impact when it turns on, when it turns on at full blast, and when do you want it disabled, like in the beginning of your print when you need to make sure it sticks to the bed. The cooling subsection works by overriding your print speed settings in favor of slowing down your print to allow quicker layers adequate time to cool. If you see that your prints are coming out with the undersides looking really rough, or if the tops of your prints looking squished and melted together, then you might want to take a look at these settings. Slow down if layer print time is below sets the minimum amount of time a layer must take to print. If a layer will take less than 30 seconds, the movement speed is reduced so the layer print time will match this value down to the minimum print speed at the lowest. Minimum print speed takes priority over a slowdown if layer print time is below. So if you have this set to 20 millimeters per second and the layer still only takes 5 seconds, it won't slow it down to a sixth the speed in order to match the 30 seconds. It's going to say, I'm just going to keep printing at 20 millimeters per second and this layer is only going to take 5 seconds. When it comes to bed adhesion print settings, there are a couple things you can use. You have skirt, raft, and brim. A skirt is just an outline that surrounds your parts to both give your printer enough time to prime the nozzle before it moves to your parts, and so you can check if your bed leveling looks good. A raft isn't often used anymore. It's more of a legacy setting. Rafts were generally used when beds weren't level, so several layers of sacrificial material were printed that could peel off the finished 3D print. There's enough advancement in bed leveling that this isn't really a problem anymore, but there are still some cases where it may be helpful to have it like an array of small parts that need to be kept from rolling away. A brim is like the brim of a top hat, extending the bottom layer of your 3D print to give more surface area for bed adhesion. Brims are especially helpful for warping materials like ABS and nylon, but are also useful for 3D models with very small first layers. Very few of your 3D models can be printed without modification. Specifically, most models have some form of unsupported overhang where material would have to be printed and solidify in midair. Support settings generate a scaffolding to go under specific parts of your 3D print and catch it. If your supports are coming out stringy and aren't really holding together before they tip over and scatter across your print bed, then it would be helpful to turn on Create Perimeter, which creates a perimeter just like the main part of your 3D print, except it does it around your supports. What changed the game for support generation was interface layers and air gaps, which prints a ceiling on top of the support and prints the first bottom solid layer that's above the interface layer slightly higher, respectively. This means you can easily remove support and significantly improve the quality of your supported 3D prints. I find three interface layers, or one millimeter, whichever gets me more layers, gives me a well-supported overhang. Air gap, however, is more printer specific, with some doing well with a 0.2mm air gap and others needing 0.6mm to remove properly. While there are presets for a lot of different materials, there's a lot of different suppliers and materials you can get now that weren't possible even a year ago. Under filament is where you'll want to modify your material specific settings. Some of them are for print estimates, like density and cost, which will show you each part's mass and cost in the print preview, while others are essential for successful 3D printing. Diameter should be cross-referenced with your spool of your filament, measuring the diameter in several places using calibers to get the average diameter of your filament. Extruder and bed temperature are also material specific, but the general rule is, if layers aren't adhering to each other, turn up the heat of the extruder. If overhangs look ugly, lower the extruder temperature. If parts are warping, raise the bed temperature. 
To prevent your printer from oozing all over the place while it's printing, your extruder will retract filament to relieve pressure and minimize stringing and spider webbing. We have another video that goes more in depth to dialing and retraction settings, but a good place to start would be bumping up your retraction length by 0.25 millimeters or increasing your retraction speed by 10 millimeters at a time and see if that improves things. Now I hope that gives you a better idea of the most significant settings that are at your disposal. There's too many to go over entirely in one video, but if you hover over your settings, you can also see the tooltips pop up, which will give you a specific description of each setting and feature. You can also check out the help page in the top left and clicking help for some walkthroughs. I'm Alec from Matter Hackers. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching. If you like that, give us a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to stay up to date with all the big builds, how to's, and troubleshooting guides I'll be working on. And don't forget, check out matterhackers.com to explore everything 3D printing and to join the community.